And welcome, everybody, to this edition here of the Mass Deal Podcast with, of course, yours truly, Charles Pratch Ritchie. I know I'm running a little bit late than usually where I'm supposed to be. But uh, anyway, we're getting ready to kick off live here on the Steelers week number three matchup versus the uh, Houston Texans right now. Steelers will be looking to do something for the first time they haven't done in over a decade. You know what that is? Start off the season 3-0. and uh, That will be a big challenge for them. As uh, for right now, hey, look, I mean, the last biggest complaint I always say about the last game against the Broncos, uh, six penalties in that game right there, nearly uh, cost them that team. And just being simply point blank, 18-12, to 12, being outscored in the second half of that game, uh, held on to win that game against the Broncos. It was a wild finish. But nonetheless, I mean, uh, defensively, they're still doing stout right now. As we look at everything as they go into this matchup, defense still seems to be clicking on all cylinders for the time being. Uh, when we look at this uh, matchup going today, I mean, let's take a look at the defensive side for right now with the Steelers. I mean, when you look at the defensive uh, side right here, I mean, the biggest thing right now, I mean, when we look at number one in uh, defending the run and rushing yards and number one in rushing touchdowns right there. And the biggest thing, too, I mean, uh, aside from this, I mean, you're number two. I mean, you're fifth in takeaways, second in interceptions. But the biggest stat I like, aside from the sacks, which they are also second in, is their red zone scoring defense against their opponents. And the Steelers' uh, red zone defense has allowed 33.3%, uh, which is uh, ranked third right there. So they're do, doing a damn good job of defending that area. Uh, protecting any uh, touchdowns being scored. And I really do believe, I mean, uh, that's one of the biggest things going into this matchup right here. I mean, I know when we look at the storylines hanging into this week and uh, this Sunday uh, was the story of the Watts brothers right there. I mean, you got uh, J.J. Watt, defensive end of the Houston Texans, then you got on the Steelers side of it, you got outside linebacker T.J. Watt and fullback uh, Darrell Watt. And Funny thing, I mean, this was like the first time in like uh, 50 years last season where three brothers played in the same game. And that was against uh, the Bills right there where we saw uh, Tremaine, Trey, and Terrell. Terrell and Trey for the Steelers, and then you had Tremaine for the Bills right there, which the Steelers did lose that Sunday night game matchup where they did go out to lose the rest of their games and miss out on the playoffs. But it's it's fun stuff to see that right there, the family uh, side of it right there. Uh, definitely talk uh, well about the Watt family right there, how prideful they are. And just to have, like, the workout enthusiasm by both Watt brothers right now. So, anyway, what is everybody's plans for today's game? Where are you watching? Are you guys watching at Steeler Bar? Are you watching at home? Or are you watching, like, off Sunday NFL ticket? Where you're watching, what are your game day plans? Feel free to let me know. You can follow me on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Project Richie for the Mount Steel Podcast. On Twitter, it is at Mount Steel CJR and on Instagram at Mount Steel Nation. Got a lot of stuff to get into here today. I know I'm a little bit running late than normally. Uh, just had some situations around the house I had to take care of. But other than that, everything uh, doing good for right now. Uh, just really waiting to see if the Steelers could uh, finish off the job right now and have a 3-0 start. I'd be honestly looking to see if they could find a way to make that happen today. I think they can. I think they got the potential to do it right there. I think the only biggest uh, question is going to be is the run game right now. We've been hearing talks all week right now that we have not had an established run game, I mean, in the steel and the Steelers' ground attack. I mean, you had Benny Snell fill in for an injured Connor in week one versus the Giants. And then you really saw, like, James Connor struggle for most of the last week's game. I told you he had that 50-plus yard burst against the Broncos late in the uh, closeout time right there. So, I mean, it, and not really much uh, consistency in that game. But right now, I mean, there just seems to be, uh, from other people's perspective, is that we don't happen to see that solidified guy who's overwhelmingly way in that position. 
feel free again to share with your comments. I'm streaming live on the Facebook Mastio podcast page. I'm going to keep it short because I know the game is going to be starting up shortly here. But those are my uh, concerns going into it right now and uh, see how they're going to be able to handle things, take care of business, and find a way to uh, win this game. And like I said, I, I really feel good about their anticipation. Uh, right now, I mean, the Steelers uh, injury report uh, heading into this uh, contest, uh, they listed uh, nine total players on the injury report with eight of them being starters, uh, which you had right now. Let's see, and we uh, take a look at, uh, they were all uh, full participants which was uh, Ben Rosberger, non-injury related. Uh, Deontay Johnson with a toe injury. He was a full participant. Uh, Drew Smith-Schuster, knee. Um, Marquise Pouncey, non-injury related. David DeCastro, knee. Uh, Stefan Tewitt, not injury related. Tyson Alualu, uh, knee. And Hayward, non-injury related. All full participants. And then he had a backup uh, center, I believe it was, uh, J.C., Pass an hour right now who had an ankle. Uh, he was a full participant in this uh, contest. Excuse me, he's a backup. Uh, yeah, he's a backup center. Uh, Haas an hour. So there you have it. I mean, those are like the nine total players right there with the one backup. And then you look on the other side of it, uh, too, uh, for the Texans, they had a total of nine players, five starters uh, right now, uh, which you had wide receiver Brandon, Brandon Cook's squad. Uh, Cullen, Gillespie, uh, fullback, Laramie Tunsil, Tunsil, left tackle, uh, Titus uh, Hauer, right tackle. Uh, we're all, all were full participants except for what? Uh, defense Ben, who had a groin injury, but also not injury related. He did not practice on Friday, but I will anticipate – uh, he's good to go. The Steelers uh, did release uh, an actors for, uh, for today's contest for uh, both clubs. Today's ball club uh, pretty much saw the bench guys, pretty much the same list as we saw last week. Uh, if you remember uh, last week's game, um, the good news is David DeCastro, he will be starting, so he's not inactive. He will be in the lineup. He was out the last couple of weeks since injury his knee back in late August. So the inactives for today's contest for the Steelers, you'll have quarterback Josh Stobbs. Inside linebacker, Ulysses Gilbert. Defense tackle, defense van, Carlos Davis. Offense tackle, Duran Gray. And tight end, uh, Zach Gentry. Those guys will not be participating in today's contest. As for the Texans, you will be having Duke uh, Johnson, running back, Cornell Armstrong. Uh, outside linebacker, Jonathan Grenard. Uh, then you have inside linebacker, Peter Columbaye. And then you got uh, right tackle, Charlie Heck, and last but not least, R Ross Blacklock, defense tackle. Those guys will not be available uh, for the Texans. So it's a uh, five for the Steelers and six for the Texans as far as the inactive reports uh, go for today's uh, contest as we look at it right now. And we'll see how this continues to shape up uh, for today's game. Uh, like I said, too, I think the one thing I would like to get a little bit better aside from the run game is the red zone scoring offense for the Steelers right here in this game. I mean, when you really look at it, uh, for the red zone, the Steelers this year have uh, been three for four, uh, scoring 75% in the, in the red zone uh, for right now to start off the season. That currently ranks eighth in the league. I'm going to double check that right now. But I, I think that could definitely just still be a touch more aggressive right there. Uh, when we look at uh, for this contest. So we'll see how that uh, continues to uh, work its way in here. Uh, for this uh, contest. So I misread that one, but we'll, I'll give you an update on that one. But yeah, I feel like the Steelers right now, who have uh, been doing a good job, I mean, this season, red zone-wise, they have been uh, four of seven for 57.1%. That ranks uh, currently right now uh, 21st in the league. 
when we look at it. And uh, that's one thing I think you don't want to be uh, screwing around with, you don't want to be messing around with uh, for this uh, contest here as we uh, look at it. Because I do believe a lot of people are going to be uh, looking at right now is like how they uh, address like uh, the run game and stuff. And we'll see how this uh, continues to go for right now. Yeah, so like I said, I mean, right now they are 21st in that category. But like I said, I like the fact that they're number one in red zone scoring defense with 28.6%. Uh, Steelers' run game so far has uh, produced a uh, total for uh, this season, when we look at things, all things considered, 46 attempts for 133 rushing yards needs to be way better than that, or 52 for 250 yards in this uh, contest here. I, I think that's going to definitely be vitally key because I, I got to believe the Texans game plan, if you're going to sold out the Steelers uh, uh, game, I think you want to put the pressure on Ben Roethlisberger. I think you want to take him out of <laughs> comfort zone game on today. And um, we'll see how this is going to be on going into this uh, contest here. And um, I just had someone ask right now, posting in Steelers fan only from uh, Kashana Green. It will be on CBS today, uh, depending on like, uh, what market you're in. Uh, if you're not watching at a bar, or watch from home, you can access on Sunday <coughs> NFL ticket if you haven't done so already. We're talking Steelers Texans right now, hanging into the week number three matchup here on the Metal Steel Podcast with, of course, yours truly, Charles Pratt Ritchie. Like to hear some comments, more feedback, some thoughts as you we get closer uh, to kickoff in less than 20 minutes right here as we uh, look at it here. Uh, some other uh, storylines uh, hanging into this uh, game right here. Mentioned by Dale Lally of DK Pittsburgh Sports. Uh, Mike Hilton has a sack once every over 14 blitzers or so in his career. Jamal Adams of the Seahawks has a sack once every 15 blitzes in his. And um, right now, I mean, if you look at the numbers like Ben Roethlisberger in this game, he is a career 4-1 and one versus the Texans. Remember, he played in five out of the six matchups uh, since the Texans came into the league. Uh, the Steelers are uh, right now uh, head-to-head-wise versus the Texans. They are four and two uh, in this contest. And uh, Ben Rosper, he's four and one against his team, clean, completing 86, 127 of his passing attempts for a 67% completion percentage along – with 1,008 passing yards with eight touchdowns, one interception for a touchdown interception ratio against the Texans of eight, which is very damn good right here. And uh, his QB rating is 111.9. So that's what I'm going to look for right now. I, I feel like, you know, like that's one thing, you know, when you look at this Texans squad, they have been not been able to solve the puzzle Ben Rosberger just yet, except for that one time when they did in Houston. And if you remember that game in Houston right there, uh, where you look at right there, and Ben, ben Roethlisberger's uh, career going up against this team, and has always been ready for, like, a game day uh, Sunday here. I mean, that his last loss against the Texans was nine years ago in uh, Houston in that contest. And I know he did get sacked uh, for a total – uh, in that contest uh, for this one. He got sacked in that game uh, five times for 28 yards, was only able to complete 16 out of his 30 passing attempts, uh, 53% uh, passing with zero touchdowns, one interception, 206 yards passing. So they lost that game in, in that one. Uh, by a touchdown, they lost that one 10-17. That's the only loss that Ben Roster has had against them. Last time these two teams didn't meet 
However, it was on Christmas, but the uh, Texans did not have the luxury of having Deshaun Watson. Remember, he got hurt earlier in the year, and uh, he was pretty much shelved uh, for the season in that contest. Uh, but like I said, I really do believe the running game, I would like to see this thing uh, pick it up a lot more. Like I said, I mean, you got the running game right now. I mean, still waiting to see, like, when they're going to pick up. I mean, it's ranked 15th in yards with 250 yards. 23rd and touchdowns uh, with one and only yards per attempt, four point yards combined between uh, James Conner and Bay Snell right now. Uh, the, the, the good news is so far, I mean, the penalties have not been as bad. I mean, as much as it was displayed in that one game, I mean, I, I definitely ripped into that a lot in that contest. But Overall, the Steelers defensively on penalties, they've only been hit with eight penalties for 55 yards, which ranks 31st. So they're not that bad in that category. They did have eight first down penalties as a result of it. I mean, when you think of the horse collars and pass interference calls in that game, uh, that was the only thing I really feel like were the Steelers, like I said. I wanted to see them get that corrected a lot more and get that heavily uh, minimized. That is important that they're going to be – doing any type of bragging rights to, like, really put a stamp on their season. And we'll see how that continues to bowl well against their opponents. And we'll see uh, what ends up happening. But like I said, I definitely do believe uh, right now, the Steelers right now, uh, let's prove it here. I mean, the last time they had an opportunity to go 3-0 and was three years ago. That was against Chicago Bears in Chicago, which they did lose that game which obviously got remembered uh, by a lot of negativity concerning around the time when Donald Trump was talking about players uh, kneeling during the national anthem. Steelers got caught up uh, in that fiasco, and it definitely took them, like, out of their game plan. Everybody was distracted and stuff like that. But, like I said, realistically, that was the last time they had the opportunity to go 3-0. They had one that opportunity the year before that, which was back in 2016, where they started off uh, defeating the Washington football team in D.C. and then following up with a home opener win against the Bengals until they got crushed mightily to the Eagles game, which I was at four years ago. And that's uh, where it all stands for right now. And uh, we'll see how this uh, continues to prove uh, dividends, how this continues to bowl well uh, for a team like here. And like I said, I definitely do believe a season like this, when you do have all together uh, one extra seed in each conference where the playoffs has expanded, that will be beginning this year, 14 teams. I think the name of the game is to get off on a, a jumping start because this year might be the year where you may be able to get in there with nine, possibly eight. I mean, if you go 500, I don't think the Steelers are going to go eight and eight this year. I mean, that's worst case scenario, I would think, which is usually worst case scenario under a Mike Tomlin-led team. But I do believe the Steelers right now, uh, yeah, I believe the Houston Texans, I mean, they're a team that's going to come in here vulnerable, uh, looking to, like, uh, hit their stride here. Because the Texans right now, I mean, in their first uh, two games, I mean, when we uh, look at it, I mean, they are minus 31 in point differential. Obviously losing those two games to the Kansas State Chiefs. Baltimore Ravens in that game. And uh, that's the thing. I mean, it's definitely been hurting uh, not having uh, DeAndre Hopkins in this contest. Because when you look at the opposite side of it, like on the Houston Texans offensively right now, uh, they're 28th in points scored, uh, 24th in total yards on offense. I mean, and then 24th in passing touchdowns. And they've uh, given up eight sacks, which is the second most allowed by their offensive line and their offensive unit for 33 yards lost. Uh, and when we look at everything else, I mean, aside from the Texans going into this year, I mean, what's the other uh, stuff you could, like, look at, too? Because, I mean, they're also 31st in rushing the ball, which is not good. But they've also been uh, four for five in the red zone this season. That's one thing to pay attention to for this contest offensively. If you look at a team like the Texans, that ranks sixth as they have scored 80% of the times in there. 
So if anything, let's go ahead and get to my keys to the game uh, for a Steelers uh, victory right here. As we take a look at it, as we get ready to march a lot closer here uh, for a Steelers victory, I'm going to go with um, key number one, establish the running game once again. Like I said, we still have no idea who that guy is going to be. Uh, a lot of people have been uh, pretty much clearly frustrated, not seeing any establishment here as we uh, pay attention to it. And uh, I, because right now, when you got a healthy Ben Roethlisberger back, you want to make this as comfortable as all possible on this guy. You want to make sure you keep him secure. You want to keep this guy in a good uh, frame of mind here. And then uh, we'll see how it continues to go uh, for this uh, contest. Because right now, I got to believe the Steelers, like I said, they're, they're feeding off a lot of momentum right now. Like I said, the only biggest beef I have with the Steelers in those first two games, they gave up 37 points against losing teams, non-playoff teams from the year before. I know it's early. A lot of people want to point and say, well, this is what we get of a byproduct of lack of preseason, I disagree. I still think at the end of the day, you know what, if Coach Mike Tomlin is not using an excuse, why should the Steelers? I just don't believe that. I don't buy it too much. I do feel that right now what they what they need to do is just uh, just be, bar be properly communicating to each other. I mean, it's just all about communication because you're, we're seeing – the way they're lining up, that's just sometimes they get hit with some of these late hits, uh, pass interference calls, which always seems to be popping up, or just some mental uh, errors on the field. And I think that's the bottom line with a team like this, because at the end of the day, when we uh, look at it, a, a team as the Steelers right now, I definitely do believe like a lot of these mental errors on the field has uh, cost them a shutout, I mean, when you think about it. I mean, in their uh, franchise uh, history, and uh, that's the sad thing about it because I do believe right now that they could be doing something uh, real good about about this time. And it's, it's been a long while since they actually had one. 2011 uh, was the last time they had it. And uh, they really haven't done much, I mean, since then. I mean, just have to, just grinding out games. At times, sometimes bend but don't break. And uh, that's how I tend to look at it. I mean, where it's uh, fair or not. But I definitely do believe right now, the, the streak right now is uh, apparently uh, for right now with this uh, team, when we look at it, I mean, uh, this is like the longest in franchise history. The second longest uh, shutout streak uh, that they had uh, prior to this was nine years from 1963 through 1972, over nine years, okay? So, I mean, they had like about nine years, three months. I mean, right now it's the season and I wanna ask you folks, do you think we'll sometimes at some point see a shutout finally by this team? I mean, if not, we'll, we'll find out, but I definitely do feel those are things that cost them. So let's go ahead and go to key number two in this game too. I would say for right now, I mean, what the Steelers do need to be, be reckoning with in this contest, uh, when we look at everything that they've been uh, prepared for, uh, when we look at the season and everything that has gone, like I said, they have the second most uh, sacks in the league, I mean, which was great at 10. I mean, I anticipate that to probably slow down just a little bit today. Probably say, I'll probably say I'll give them like three. But when you look at the Steelers overall, too, in this contest, I mean, for right now, I mean, their uh, blitz percentage, they blitz about – nearly 62% of the time, which is the most uh, in this uh, year. 
you know, and I, I definitely do feel like for right now, I mean, they need to be a little careful with that because there's been times where they've been dropping in the zone. I think as a result of that, they still get burned with some of these little tight window passes here. And we'll see how that continues to work its way around. So I would definitely just say, like I said, just play a well-rounded game in this uh, contest here. And we'll see uh, how that uh, continues to work itself out uh, for for this game because, like I said, I think that's something they could definitely do a lot better because right now their sack percentage right now is about 11%. Okay, and they've been able to get like uh, 10 sacks uh, in that uh, contest here when we uh, look at – and then uh, key number uh, three, last but not least, just continue to take care of the ball for right now. I think right now when we look at this contest here, I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers, for the most part this year, has been playing some disciplined football on offense, protecting the ball with the exception of last week where we only had uh, – I mean, they have only three uh, turnovers, which ranks 12th. I mean, like I said, I mean, you had – a lost fumble in that opening game against the Giants. I think it was. I think he had a pair of lost fumbles in last week's contest, plus an interception. So I would just look for that to be uh, calmed down on. And other than that, I mean, be looking for a uh, third victory. And that's going to do it here for this edition here of the Mass Deal Podcast. Once again, you can follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, at Project Richie. For the Mass Deal Podcast on Twitter, it is at Mass Steel CGR on Instagram at Mass Steel Nation. As I always leave our way as we continue to go. Here we go, Steers. Here we go. I gone. And uh, let's go ahead and pick up and rack up victory number three for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. And hopefully they'll be able to get some help with the Kansas City Chiefs once again, uh, defeating the Baltimore Ravens. Because I'll tell you what, one thing I will not dismiss. Steelers have the first chance for a long time to be in first place in the AFC North, which they had not had last, I think, since uh, week 16, I want to say it was, back in 2018 when they slowly uh, slipped that way. And you had Lamar Jackson playing down the stretch and place Joe Flacco as their Steelers beat the Ravens in Baltimore. That's where I'm going to leave at. Hopefully the Steelers win, and then the Chiefs will be able to beat the Ravens, and the Steelers go 3-0 and sole place of the AFC North division. This is Charles Project. signing off. Here we go, here we go, I gone.